With British pubs closed thanks to COVID-19, my desperation for a properly pulled pint of real ale reached fever pitch last week, resulting in me not only brewing my own batch of the delicious Five Points Best, but sourcing a second-hand beer engine to pour it through a sparkler. If you missed that brew day, click the card in the corner. But if you're ready to find out what happened next, you'll be pleased to know the first stage of fermentation went to plan. The next step is to move the beer into a second sealed container to ferment a little more under pressure. That naturally forces carbonation into the beer over a few days, a key process in making traditional real ale. For that, I've chosen to use old school bag in boxes. So there's a long way to go before I get to sample my first cast pint since March and some vital equipment left to arrive too. So fortuitously, the first thing to arrive via mail order was my bag in box setup, which is what I need first. And it arrived just a couple of days before this finished fermenting. This was trolling me by the end. Like I thought it was done. Like there'd be six hours of nothing and then blah, 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 blah. And then towards the end, it's like, I don't think I've heard it go all blah, 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 blah. I feel like while I'm filming this, it's gonna do it. But I'm pretty sure it's reached its final gravity there. Greg at five points doesn't actually do it that way. He will take it and crash it, cold crash it, before it hits final gravity. But that's because he knows what final gravity is. Having never brewed this, having never mashed that before, having never used this yeast before, I don't quite know exactly how it's all gonna behave. So I've let it finish, and then I'm gonna prime it, which means adding more sugar before I put it into the bag in boxes. So, this is my amazingly trendy box. My first step is to assemble these, and then into that I'm going to insert my bags. These bags do not look hefty, like not even extra safe condom. Like I'm a bit worried whether these will last under pressure. It's gonna be quite a long process because I've got to get all of the beer out of this container and into another bucket, which I've got down here so that I can add the priming sugar, the priming solution to that. It's about 50 grams of sugar. So I just bit of boiling water, mix it up, put it in there and then transfer the beer on top of it. I'm gonna montage that and hopefully by the end of it, magically, the hand pull will have arrived. Okay, we're all in, which is lucky because I was running out of beer books. If it's about to go into the bags, I'm really worried about the amount of DO dissolved oxygen that I'm getting through all these transfers, but I'm hoping that that secondary fermentation that's gonna happen is gonna chew up lots more of that oxygen like happens when you first go into the fermenter. Um, I'm also slightly worried, I got, uh, I had 19 and a bit in the fermenter, I lost, I'm down to about 18, which means I might have slightly overdone my priming sugar. Ah, but this is what happens when you homebrew and it's part of the fun. So, man has created real ale. Super chuffed with that. I might have created a monster though, because this shows me that it's fermented down to 1.011. But actually, because my recipe was gonna end up a little bit less alcoholic, that's cool. I just hope we don't lose that bit of sweetness. So I could just drink that in five or six days time once it's fermented out, once we've got some carbonation in there, but I don't wanna do that. I need to wait for the hample to arrive so that I can use a sparkler to give it the traditional Northern and indeed five points pour, but also because it's not really real ale in my view until it's coming out of a hand pump. But the question is, when is that hand pull gonna arrive? No fucking way. Right, so the beer is put to bed, or bag, or box, and the time has come to open my hand pull, which arrived remarkably on cue. Um, so this has come pretty much direct from our LBS who supply uh, pubs, and this is a renovated one. So I'm not quite sure what damage is gonna be done, so I'm gonna give it a test before I um, risk my beer on it. I didn't know unboxing videos were so hard. Ah, it's alive! Wow. That is a proper cast Campbell. <laughs> I don't know what I expected when I bought a proper cast Campbell, but that is a proper cast Campbell. The best 108 quid I have 
ever spent. Especially since I ordered it to come with this amazing gizmo, which allows me to pour directly from the Vitop connector I've got in my bag in boxes. I've got a load of cleaning solution uh, that I've put into a third bag for a box. It's got the right fitting on it, so I'm just gonna try and pull that through and see if it works. There's good noises. I can see liquid moving. Is it gonna come out of my sparkler? Yeah! <laughs> oh my God. I have a cars can pull in my house. Now we just need to see if the beer is carbonated. So I'm recording a couple of days later. I'm very happy to say that those bags were carving up really nicely, really inflating. Uh, and I've popped them in the fridge now uh, to stop that fermentation happening, uh, to chill them down to the serving temperature of around 10 degrees, to settle out some of that sediment and to start absorbing some of that CO2, which is what starts happening at lower temperatures. In the meantime, I've made some super cute spaceman-like outfits for those boxes so that when I get to pour them, they stay at that temperature for as long as possible while I'm pouring. I've also been putting in some calls to some friends and beer geeks because even when it's a fuggle-led, delicious 4%-ish bitter, that's a lot of beer for me to drink, 20 litres. So we're going to crack it on Beer Day Britain, which is on Monday, and I'm going to see how many of those beer geeks turn up to try some. Okay, so after a short, sharp lesson in physics, namely gravity, and that if you put your car scale above your hand pull, it's just gonna drip, I'm now ready for the first ever pour of this beer. And I'm not exaggerating when I say, say that I'm shaking. I'm not gonna show you this pour, I want you guys to see it as it comes up. You can just read my face as this pours. What I'm gonna be looking for is a lovely tight head, uh, good clarity, is good a clarity as we can possibly get, and hopefully some nice aromas bouncing up the glass at me. Uh, this is the moment of truth. Oh my God, <laughs> would you look at that? I never expected it to look that good, ever in a million years. That head is so beautiful. That color is perfect. I mean, it is hazy as hell. That is New England level hazy. So something's gone a little bit wrong there, but there's no reason to think that won't still be delicious and I'm seeing body and carbonation rising up the glass, which was the hardest thing to get right here. Right, let's give this a go. Yes, spice, caramel. Little edge of, of um, fruitiness from the yeast. Yeah, a little bit peachy. No grassiness or anything there. Really happy with the presentation of the hops. Why am I waiting? Why am I waiting? That is not bad. <laughs> that is not bad at all. Um, lovely caramel profile, lovely, lovely Fuggles finish, really kind of biting at my tongue, going snap, snap, snap with that bitterness, that brambly fruitiness. It is all there. My only issue is it is slightly dry and thin, which, you know, when I said earlier I'd brewed a monster, I think it did ferment a lot further than maybe I'd wanted it to. Otherwise, all those flavour profiles are there. All of them. I'm going to come cheers, you guys. 
Who could that be? Hello? What's up? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man, I'll be down in a sec. I've got a treat for you. Awesome. Hey. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So, Bradley, we can't actually cheers, but air cheers. Air it's cheers. good to see you, man. How are you? Mate, it's great to see you. I'm good. And i tell you what, it's... it's great to be back doing this <laughs> uh, back in front of the camera again exactly. even if we're socially distant <laughs> yeah um what do you think of it like what are your memories of best beforehand and does this is this hitting like you know flavors linked to yeah. memory so much is it tickling those memories of the pembry it's like a sort of putting on a lovely jacket it's a soothing beer i'd like to settle in and just drink it it's, yeah it's, it's like caramelly kind of stuff going on bitterness is it there is that big bitterness and that Kind of almost sweet caramel, but it's quite a dry beer. So implications Sorry. of caramel. Is it there? Mate, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I'm mm. kind of blown away. So now the final test is to see what some beer geeks think about it. Uh, and hopefully any second now we're going to get some. First up was Claire Bullen, good beer hunting editor and author. Hello. Welcome to our makeshift pub. <laughs> Brad is the welcome party. I'll get you a pint. Pine. It's got nice bitterness, really nice bitterness at the end there actually, but it's got that kind of sweet bready toffee thing that I love so much about that beer, it's really balanced. Then came Phil, who runs my local bottle shop Caps and Taps. Yeah. How's it going man? Oops. Got the glassware, look at this. We Michael Jackson is coming to grab a glass from you. <laughs> there you go my man. I feel like it's lacking a little bit of body. A little bit of body. Yeah. That's what I actually little, said. Little I said bit. said earlier in the video, it's gone a little bit dry, which has meant it's gone a little bit thin. A little bit, yeah, it's a little bit thin. But that's but apart from that, crackable. Yeah. Honesty. I want honesty. My heart's broken like my glove is now. <laughs> <laughs> and then my oldest friend, Rich Soames. What do you think, Rich? Is it taking you back to the Southampton Arms? Um. You know what? I feel like I'm in a pub. Outside a pub. Yeah, a very drafty pub. <laughs> Did I mention he was a comedian? We whiled away the next few hours getting through most of the first box. There's no higher praise than people sinking three pints of your homebrew in quick succession, but as I sat there, I started to realise that the feedback I really needed could only come from one person. I'm coming, Greg. How are you? You well? Yeah. No, we'll um, awkwardly... Hey Greg, on a scale of 1 to 10, what are your expectations? Um, I'm reasonably confident actually. Yeah? Yeah, I'd say uh, like a 7. Well, the head's gone, but... <laughs> head's gone. Colour looks good. Some, it's some the right sort of amber colour. I mean, it's really clean. Fuggle comes across nicely. Nice malt character. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's definitely definitely resembles Five Points Best. Ball, ballpark. It's definitely ballpark. I don't know if maybe we pick up a bit more. I, I think maybe the crystal malt comes across a bit more actually. Maybe we pick up a bit more bitterness from the initial yeah. charge. Maybe. I think our bitterness is a little bit lower. I think I weirdly I get a bit more roast from it yeah. than caramel. Yeah. Um. Which might, I don't know whether I picked like one two darker caramel Could be. malt when I shopped. Yeah, um, there is a there is a slight sort of roasty toasty mm. character. It's pleasant though. So Greg, if it if it wasn't muled with yes. this, if it was sparkled so it had a bit more life to it, a bit more head. Yeah. Would you go back for a second if you had a pint of it? Well, that's the key question, yeah. isn't it? I think I would. You would? Yeah, I would. Yeah, it's it's really clean, flavoursome. So it's a really nice beer. I'll take that. Cheers. 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 So there we have it, a brewer-approved home-brewed pint of Five Points Best. It will never replace a pint at the Southampton, but there's a unique thrill to nailing your own beer. Oh my God, absolutely ecstatic with that feedback. I am going home to celebrate with my own hand-pulled pint of Five Points Best in my own lounge. Cheers, guys. We'll see you soon.
To walk like two out the door Then you have magic